So let's dive right in over here. So we're looking at the universal control launcher. And as you can see, I have multiple interfaces connected to my computer right now. So we have two different options showing up here. I've got a Studio 192 and I've got the Quantum. Now it's worth mentioning that depending on which interface you select here, so for example, let's choose the Quantum over here, we have a different GUI of universal control. So for example, we have a much more simplified graphic user interface when we're connected to the Quantum versus when we're connected to a Studio 192. So let's have a quick look at this over here. Well, as you can see here, this is pretty cut and dry. And the idea with this interface was to keep it really, really simple. And it's worth mentioning that any monitoring that's happening within the quantum is done via software as opposed to controlling a low latency mixer within universal control. So we have all of our inputs over here that are available on the interface. Now, in addition to that, we have all of our outputs. So here's our left, right, our four stereo pairs, and then we have our headphone one, headphone two, which are both direct, and we have our SPDIF. Now, if we want to have a look at the ADATs, all we have to do is just click this little option over here. The minute I click ADAT, you can see that we have two banks of ADAT. We have bank one and bank two. Now it's worth mentioning that I currently have this quantum system hooked up to a DP88, meaning that because I have the input and output of my DP88 hooked up to the bank one of the ADATs on the quantum, I have full control and this is bi-directional, meaning that anything I do on the software will follow the hardware. And in addition to that, if I make any adjustments on the hardware itself, so for example, let's adjust the preamp gain of channel two, you'll see that that also follows on the software. Very handy. And it's also worth mentioning that once we open up Studio One, that we have a further level of control using the audio device controls. But we'll have a look at that in a minute. Now, aside from that, we also have this real-time analysis option over here. So if we click this tab over here, we get this graphical user interface. And depending on which channel you have selected, whether it's an input or an output, we'll have a real-time analysis of the audio that's passing through. So for example, let's go ahead here and we'll open up Studio One. And I'm just gonna engage playback on one of these loops over here. Now let's hop into our universal control. You can see that we have access to all this information here. Now I can change things such as the height, the range, the hold, and the average. And in addition to that, we can also choose different modes. So for example, here would be K20, here would be K12. And the latest edition, we have an EBU R128 mode, which as you can see, will give us lots of information in terms of the loudness levels. And we can choose between loudness units relative to full scale. You can see we have a LUFS measurements happening here now. I have the integrated level, our short term, our momentary, and in addition to that, we also have true peak. And of course, I can reset this as well. So that particular aspect of universal control makes it very easy to monitor what is either coming in or out of the quantum. So very, very useful, very practical. Let's go ahead and close this off. Now we'll have a look at this section over here. Like I said, pretty simple. We have the ability to dial up the gain and engage phantom power either through universal control, studio on device controls, or also through the hardware itself. So for example, let's just move to preamp channel three and I can move this up or down. Now with respect to the front two inputs, we have three different options on the quantum. Whereas traditional interfaces will often offer a mic or instrument input, with the quantum, by selecting this button over here, which I can depress simply by clicking over here, we actually have three different options. So for example, I can use this as a microphone preamp. I can also use this as a line level connection, and then I can toggle between either minus 10 or plus four. And in addition to that, we can also use it as an instrument input, so a direct input from an instrument by depressing this button on the front over here. Very, very useful. Now, as I mentioned, this is bi-directional between universal control and the hardware, but another thing that we also have over here is if we head into this options tab within our console in Studio One, and we enable this option over here, show audio device controls, 
then you'll see we have some additional controls over here. So let's go ahead, we'll create a mono track over here. Now you can see that we have, depending on which input we're using, we have some different options. So for example, I can adjust now my preamp gain directly from Studio One. I can also engage my phantom power from Studio One. Now if I was using input one or two, as a line level, I could also toggle between minus 10 and plus four. So again, very, very useful. Now the other cool thing that we can do is we also have some device controls right on the right side of our main outs over here. So in terms of some of the basic functions that we have like talkback, mute, dim, and mono, these are controllable from within the hardware, the universal control application, or if you're like me and you prefer to manage one application, then we can just adjust things directly from Studio One. And it's also worth mentioning that all of these controls here, the majority of them, are available as keyboard shortcuts. So if you go to our keyboard shortcuts and we type in audio device, you'll notice here that we have dim, mono, mute, restore audio device settings, which is this section over here, speaker switching for interfaces that support it, such as the Studio 192, and also talk back. We can map these out to a keyboard shortcut in Studio One. So with that in mind, then I don't even have to be touching my interface. I don't have to have universal control open. I can do things such as dim, mute, mono, also engage my talk back, all directly from within Studio One. Now you'll notice that when I enable my talk back, we also have an auto dim function that happens. And it's also worth mentioning we can adjust the preamp sensitivity directly from Studio One as well. Let's hop back over to Universal Control for a second. Let's talk about these controls. Well, this is pretty self-explanatory. We've gone over the mute dim. Dim is also linked to talkback so that when you open up your talkback and your monitors are engaged, it's automatically going to drop the level so that you're not overloading your artist's QMix. Now we can adjust the preamp level directly from Universal Control or the hardware. If we want to use the hardware, all we have to do is toggle back until we hit the C over here and then I can adjust the preamp setting directly from the hardware. And it's worth mentioning that this is a built-in microphone on the front panel of the Quantum. So if you have this in a rack close by to you, very easy, you don't have to set up another talkback mic, very easy to access this. And we'll discuss the routing in a moment. First of all, I just wanna talk about the main knob controls. So we have some different options. So for example, I could set the main knob to control specific outputs. So in this case, I could set it to control three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, or I can also set it to control all. Now with respect to using the all function with the main knob controls, this is really for when you're using the quantum in a surround sound monitoring application. So any software that supports surround and any time you're using the quantum in that capacity, we simply can enable this option and this will allow us to control the level of all of our speakers with the main knob. So very useful if you're using surround. Now, currently I only have a set of speakers hooked up to my main out, so I'm just gonna deselect this. Let's talk about headphone source for a second. And like I said, a lot of these functions are also available in Studio One. So we have our phone's source, headphone one source and headphone two source. It's also available from with Studio One. And as we change anything over here, so for example, I've changed this to phones two, that's going to update in the universal control GUI. So this is a pretty useful feature in the respect that we can set the routing that we have or which output of the quantum that headphone one and headphone two are going to be listening to and outputting on their individual headphone bus. So for example, I prefer to listen to the main outs on my headphone one, which is usually what I'm listening to in a tracking session or when mixing. Now by default, I could set these both to be main outs, but if I'm working with an artist that required a QMix, very easy for me to hop into Studio One over here, open my IO setup, go to my outputs, enable headphone two direct as a QMix output, click apply, okay. And now I can adjust the QMix levels independently from the actual levels that are coming off of the main console. Then all I would have to do is come into my headphone two source and set this to phones two. Now, if I wanted to quickly have them listen to a different mix, I could, for example, have them listen to the main outs 
just by adjusting the headphone source in this section of the audio device controls. And like I said, this is bi-directional, so this can be done through universal control and also through Studio One in the audio device controls. Last up, we have MIDI. I currently have this set to enabled. Now we can have different settings over here. We have disabled, internal only, external only, and enabled. I have this enabled and set up as an external device within Studio One. So I currently have quantum external MIDI set up. Now what this means is that anytime I'm working at another studio, nine times out of 10 when I'm at another studio, they have a MIDI controller of some sort. And on most MIDI controllers, we can find a generic five pin MIDI connection. So what this allows me to do is simply connect to their system using five pin MIDI. Then I don't have to worry about installing any software. I don't have to worry about any incompatibilities with drivers or whether or not their MIDI controller will work on my version of an operating system. I can simply use the Quantum's external MIDI to connect to any external MIDI device controller and then I'm just using a generic MIDI device. So essentially, I can be ready to go and record MIDI very simply with the Quantum. Very cool feature, also very useful. Now let's talk about the TalkBack microphone for a second. So like I mentioned, we have a built-in TalkBack microphone. As you'll notice over here, on channel 27, in terms of what the driver is reporting to us, and we're going to have a look at the I.O. setup in a little bit detail a little bit later on, We've got the talkback, and this is where the talkback is happening. So in order to add this, let's go ahead and add a mono channel, and let's map this out to the talkback mic over here. And in fact, let's also rename this talk back. Now I can go ahead and click apply and okay. Now if I went ahead here and added a new mono track, I can set its source to talkback. And I can use my shortcuts in Studio One to engage TalkBack on this track. So for example, let's monitor and enable our TalkBack channel. And I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut T, which I've programmed to TalkBack to open up the TalkBack mic. So now we have TalkBack. And this is a TalkBack mic, and this is happening in the same room. Go ahead and close this off now. Now the great thing about this is if you're using Q mixes and I'm sending out a discrete mix, I could, for example, say, all right, I don't want to hear the talk back at all in the mains. So let's go ahead. We're going to turn this down and then I can just unlock this and I can set a discrete or independent level that's going out to my headphones too, which is going out to my artist that's sitting in an isolation booth. So now when I hit the talk back, the talk back is going out to the headphones too, but it's not coming out to main mix. So very easy for me now to just use a talkback, and this won't be coming through the mains, it's just going out to my artist. 